another alternative for you subdivision uh, boys and girls out there who are actually interested in it. Um, convert to edible poly. Oops. Put that back on to 1, 1, and 1. Convert to edible poly. Add another um, edge loop in there. Hit F4, so, or actually I'm going to just come under here. Uh, there we go. So, let me actually make a little bit more of a complicated shape here. Bridge, bridge, by the way Max 2015 now has quad chamfer, it only took them forever to get that in, that's very exciting. Alright, there we go. And we'll do this guy, we'll bridge you, take these faces and cap. Okay, so I'm gonna grab mesh smooth. Okay, oh that's strange looking. It's even more strange looking. <laughs> um so under inside of Max again, Max is one of the Maya does the same thing where it, they have a hierarchy, they have a stack, um, which I absolutely love. Um, I think it's super, super important. Do, 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 do. Show cage. Okay. This is the low poly cage that's underneath. This is one of the things like when you're su when you're doing subdivisional modeling, um, that's always good to uh, see. So we can actually come in here and now we can go in on each of these guys and this is called edge creasing and we can do this in multiple locations um, we can actually do this on the lower object level as well until it's apparent up but we can crease these edges and let me show you the, some of the benefits of doing that do, do, do. come on come all the way down Oop, let me grab you Obviously, you can get some really interesting looking shapes, <laughs> but these kind of shapes are kind of hard to pull off with just straight, um, with just straight uh, reinforced like edge reinforcements. Um, in fact, it's actually I wouldn't say it's impossible, but it it's difficult. <laughs> Give me the edge. <laughs> okay, so this is another. Um, I don't want to say cheap, but um, another easier. Tone down some of the, put some of the weighting here. Some of the nice, uh, another nice way to get um, some good creases into your object. Now, this thing will, I believe, it will have issues with the cage if I suddenly take this, and let me. I have my edge constraints still on. Actually, that's okay. Pull that up, turn off edge constraint, inset. See how it's, oh, that's cool, it's actually maintaining it. Okay, that's good. I've had it where it doesn't actually maintain the edge uh, constraint, so that sucks. But it's good it's doing it right now for the uh, for the video. That makes me so much happier. And we'll do local again for the face. Come under here, geopoly. There's that. Bevel you in, bevel. Get that a little bit more circular. There you go. Look, it's a button. Cute as a button. <laughs> but this is, again, super, um, it's basic, but this is important stuff to know when you're going through and you're trying to figure out um, how you want to model out your assets. Okay, these techniques are really, 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 really useful, and they're time savers. Um, Again, I tend to prefer just the straight subdivisional modeling method, um, but again, it's kind of really up to you how you want to work, and I'm going to encourage you guys to work the way that you want to work. Um, you take these classes and you watch these DVDs um, to uh, to learn new techniques and add them into your arsenal. So, you know, as long as you're having fun doing that, I think it's great. Do do do. And I do want to take a quick second. I do want to take a quick second to call out some people here. Um, my friend Dom uh, 
and my super old friend, uh, not super old friend, but I used to work with these guys down at Blizzard, they're also doing their own tutorial lines, and they're doing super affordable ones, um, and uh, they're over at the Gumroad stuff. You can find Dominic, who is a psychotically good creature and just badass artist all around um, kind of dude. Um, you can find his stuff at Gumroad, and also Joe Peterson, if you guys don't know his concept stuff. Um, you should know his stuff because it's amazing <laughs> and it's really good um, for you guys to branch out into other um, skill sets that aren't necessarily your core focus so um, just a little quick nod to them saying hey check out their stuff because it's really good and again like I said the nice thing about doing this uh, workflow is it's very non-destructive um, you can see here just off this one operand oops. I'm getting a lot of really cool shapes um, and I'm not really keeping everything pretty simple um, I'm just reacting to the the forms I'm not gonna make anything super awesome off of this but if you guys need to suddenly go off and do oop I got an edge that's not creased if you guys suddenly need to go off and turn you down turn you back on um, if you guys need to go off and you know maybe I don't know, build a car or something, or you want to add some cool part to a machine. You know, you can definitely do that with these techniques. And again, this is this is a little bit more old school stuff, and it's a little bit of stuff that's buried in the bowels of Max. Max and Meyer, these kind of these monolithic um, programs that have been around for a while, and uh, you know, some of these techniques kind of get lost as time goes on. Unfortunately, let's come back down here. Again, we want to do this creasing off of the edges. Actually, let's only do let's just do this top guy. Let's do all these top ones. Look at that. That's so cool. <laughs> and we can chamfer it too if we want to adjust the uh, the edges as well. That was weird. All right. And obviously, we'll it'll maintain and it'll remember what was the original edge. Which again, really nice. So uh, again, I encourage you guys if you guys are going to do any subdivisional stuff, at, at least you know if you want to be an overachiever and do it with this first part of this course, you can definitely go through and do that. Um, this is a, definitely a technique that I strongly recommend you guys doing, <laughs> um, especially because I, can you edge loop? Oh, you can't edge loop off of this. I haven't put that in yet. Autodesk, if you're watching this, put that in, please. Oh. There we go. It'd be nice to actually have the ability to uh, do the full uh, edge loops as well. So again, this is basically saying this control level is your how many subdivisions. I believe it's tried into the amount of iterations that you have. So if I go up, see if it'll give me that. Yeah, it'll give me. Um, be careful of doing that. <laughs> go stay low like do yourself a huge favor and stay low <laughs> it's just it's too much to manage um, but this is like the this is uh, one of the ways like if I have to bust out a sub D model and I, it's like Dave you have absolutely no time to do this um, this is the way I will try to attempt to do it the best that I can um, you know I can come back in here adjust the edge weighting on this Smooth that out. If I want this surface to maybe swoop a little bit or do something cool, you know, maybe grab these edges. I'll come under here. Oop, I wasn't in poly mode, sorry. Come under here. I'll connect you guys up. And I'll slide them back. So again, you can see the the difference there. And this is kind of what you'll want to do as you're refining your surfaces and stuff. You want to make sure when you're doing this stuff, though, that you, oh, see, I actually messed up there. I was about to say, keep your surfaces clean. Why did that do that? Up. Oh, no boy, no. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's why. Okay. 
Yeah, I had some extra edges. You want to make sure that you're keeping your surfaces as clean as you can. Um, and it, it does make a difference um, in terms of your modeling. It also helps with your UVing as well. Like the more simplistic these shapes are, the easier they are to control and UV map. Having said that, I understand that there are deadlines and that you can't spend much of time going through and making sure everything's a quad all the time. You can't really do that. Um, but you should try <laughs> if you can. Uh, but again, this is um, this is a bit of an old school technique. This isn't as robust as the Pixar subdiv. Like the Pixar subdiv stuff you can do a lot with. But for most of, I would say, most of your modeling needs, this is going to get you a lot of the way there. Um, and again, this is a little bit more old school, but it uh, works nonetheless, right? Like, we can go in and scale and adjust these as well. Um, I would caution you about doing this, just because it can get a little confusing. I like to do this stuff off the base cages. But, you know, if you're flowing and you're like, I don't need to drop down, it's no big deal, you can do that as well. And if you ever get confused, which I just did, just creasing this edge here. Right, so we get this nice kind of flowy surface. Again, you can just grab this guy. And it will remember your edges as well, so you can, you know, increase or decrease the weighting. But again, if you don't want a super pinched edge or whatever, you know, you just adjust, right? You just play with it. Um, and this is, again, great for these swooped automotive shapes. And as you increase, this stuff will get tighter depending on um, what you've set these creases to. Do, do, do. Come back in here. There we go. So super simple. Um, but again, these are techniques that um, are invaluable, I think, for uh, for modeling, especially in modeling in this day and age. I sound old when I say that. I'm not really old. Um, I feel old though. <laughs> but it's this is the stuff that um, I think is really helpful to see these alternative ways of working. You should always be trying, at least in my opinion, you should always be trying to find new and different ways to work. Um, because you know what, you may find like, hey, um, this technique is really great, but I don't really want to deal with it. Um, or, hey, this is uh, the way I've been doing this is actually not the greatest. Like, I can actually improve and save time, which is really good. And I'm going to, you know, make myself more marketable. Right? That's why I encourage you guys to try and use new software. I'm currently trying to do that right now um, with Modo, and I'm failing miserably. But, you know, I'm still trying like you know even if you don't end even if it doesn't end up working for you um, that's okay let's actually grab this bird to see here and do the actually where's this crease happening here got a bunch of different stuff going on here there we go just tone that down we don't need that I looked angry <laughs> so that is one form of doing the mesh smooth stuff Put that back to where it didn't look so terrible. I don't think I have enough sit steps. It just looks bad. <laughs> but that's okay. We can, you know, we could spend all day playing and tweaking with this stuff. But again, very simple way of doing things. And that on top of the Boolean helps you guys, should help you guys get your uh, sub-divisional modeling on if need be. Um, and we will continue on.